Hello and welcome to another edition of PCAM Lab Screencast. I'm Professor Jeff Yager. Today I'm going to take a few brief minutes and explain um, how to get ASCII NMR diffusion data into a program like Kaleidograph and be able to plot it basically. This was covered in another screencast where we went through the entire process. We're going to break down just the very first step uh, in this process today to make sure we have all the details we need. So whether you're in Chemistry 343, uh, this one is 343 for the spring semester of 2013. Um, or you're not in this class, you're just, uh, you can get this data from downloads, uh, this Chem 343 NMR diffusion data, again for the spring 2013 semester. It's a zip file. Um, once you uh, grab this data, so here it is in content, experiment number one, and the data is right here. Um, as well as the assignment for each student, and then obviously on yargersci.com. It's in the downloads folder, and it's this first one right here. So once you have that downloaded um, onto your computer, it typically uh, downloads it into, um, into the downloads directory on your computer. So if you go to downloads, or if you go to your home directory, mine's yarger, then from there to downloads. It downloads it there. Now I've dragged that and there's a zip file. Uh, it unzips it and puts it into a directory and so I put that onto my desktop here. Okay, so those are the steps I've done so far. Now I have that unzipped in a directory here and you'll see I provided seven data sets that were collected during class during the spring 2013 in the Magnetic Resonance Research Center at Arizona State University. We collected those on a variant 500 megahertz NMR. We then took that data, we uh, imported it into Topspin, which is Bruker NMR software package, and we saved it as an ASCII or a text file set. And that's what I've included here because it's a general one that any student can use without needing any specialized NMR program to be able to look at it. And so that's what these files are here. And then I've included a README file, which is also very helpful, that gives the details of the experiment. So it again tells you um, that it was collected on a 500 megahertz variant, what the sweep width was, acquisition time. So the relevant NMR parameters, the relevant diffusion parameters, what the stack um, is. So it's linear from 0 to 32K, uh, a linear gradient, and what a general conversion is, even though we'll determine that ourselves, and then what was in the sample uh, that was used here. And it gives some of the chemical shifts so that you don't even have to uh, assign it yourself. So, so we have some of the details here and I'm just gonna, this is opened in a text editor. If you're on a PC you could use something like Notepad, etc. You'll see that every time I click it does a dot. That is from a program called Pinpoint um, uh, that I use and the other one is when it goes to a circle like this. This is uh, this program here which is called Mouse Pose um, that I'm using to add some effects to this program. Um, so what I want to show you briefly is just how to take this data, let's say for example this first data set which was taken in a DAC of a thousand here, if I open it, it opens in a text file and you'll see the obvious, like it gives a header, it tells you what the PPM axis is or what would be the x-axis of an NMR plot. Uh, in PPM, that the far left point is 11 PPM, the far right point is minus 1 PPM, and then there's 32K points, or 32,768 points that make up this, and then here's all the data, which is the intensity data, uh, which would be the y-axis of the NMR. So it only gives the y-axis, it expects you to generate the x-axis yourself. You could do this in any program, Excel, anything that plots, uh, Kaleidograph, um, Origin, Sigma Plot, MATLAB, you know, Mathematica, etc. In Chemistry 343, we often do most of our examples in Kaleidograph because it works on both the PC and Mac um, because it's spreadsheet driven like Excel, but it has more scientific uh, capabilities than Excel uh, by default. So I'm going to open Kaleidograph. It opens a spreadsheet type format here. Um, that we'd like to be able to, to plot. We need both an X and a Y axis here. So um, before I import the data, I can go ahead and make, I want a chemical shift 
in PPM axis. And how I'm going to create that, how I'm going to get all the numbers here, is through creating a series. So I need to know the initial value, which is right here, 11. And so I'm just going to put in that initial value, paste it in, Apple V. I need to know the increment, which is uh, this plus, you know, um, an extra one ppm on the other side. So the total range of the ppm, which is basically 12, right, uh, divided by the number of points. And so I'll do that in a second, but I do know the final value as well, which is minus one ppm with a bunch of extra. So I know the final value here. I'm not going to have a multiplier. I just want it to increment by one. And I need to get this exact increment here. This is where, again, you could just use a calculator, but I like to, to show this in Mathematica just because Mathematica is what I use for almost all just basic calculations. So um, this is the one value, starting value, um, what I'm going to add to it. Uh, so plus is this value right here. Right, so that is the total PPM range, which is 11.00 whatever plus another one, and then I'm going to divide by the number of points. I'm going to hit Shift Enter, which does that calculation. So that is now the increment, right? except that would increment in a positive direction, and I'm going to want to increment in a negative direction. So I'm going to leave that negative in front of it. And now when I hit OK, it's going to create that data set for me. And if I swoop down, it'll have all, um, it should go down to 30, you know, 2K points and it does, 32,768 points. So now I have used Mathematica to quickly do this. The nice thing about Mathematica is it can do any basic operation, you know, two plus two is equal to what, you know, four, etc. But it can, and, and there's a whole, um, uh, besides just being able to do basic calculations, you can do plotting, you can do derivatives, integrals, etc. So I like to just have this open for a lot of basic mathematical operations. Uh, it also provides a lot of um, tutorials on, on how to do stuff, uh, etc. So uh, you can go to its document center um, and from its document center, you know, get, for example, if you wanted to know how to visualize data, um, and you wanted to know how to, you know, fit two optimizations here, it would show you how to do that. You can take, um, you know, something like this, you know, copy it, take it to your Mathematica window, paste it here, and go, you know. So you can, you know, learn how to do, you know, everything needed in Mathematica, um, you know, through uh, going through a lot of their tutorials. Okay, so just as an example, I'm going to go ahead and close that, not save it at the moment, get rid of some of these other windows, and then um, so now we have our data. The last thing we need to do is to have our, you know, our thousand, you know, DAC data, you know, here, and again for that we're going to open a data set it's that ASCII data set. It's this one right here. Uh, we're going to open that. We're going to skip 10 lines of code. It's tab. It doesn't matter delimination because it's just one. We're not reading titles in this one. And we're going to read that into, um, it's going to read that into a separate data set. And we can take that data set, copy it, paste it in here. And then now we have X and Y data. So now we're able to plot it. Um, I'm just coming down to make sure, you know, basically they're the same length, so they're you know, off by one. So I'll just get rid of that, which is basically, given the increment value so small, it's, it's pretty irrelevant. Now I can go to gallery and plot a line of the chemical shift versus the DAC unit. 
um, plop that onto a different screen. I'm going to pull it onto ours. Uh, I can get rid of the symbols uh, here by just by making them zero. So there's our line spectrum and there's our NMR spectrum. It's uh, already plotted in the uh, reverse order here. So reverse the the axis. So that gets us to our first set of data. We can obviously, it's the same chemical shift range for all of them. You can verify that by looking at the header of each of the files. And we could therefore take this and plot all of the data. Hope this gets you going on how to import into something like Kaleidograph or some scientific plotting package some ASCII NMR data and get it plotted when only the y-axis is given.